Hi, this is Misha, and I've been asked to do more with the FAL, but unfortunately there's not uh, a lot more to talk about. There have not been any new uh, parts kits on the market, and really no imports, of course, and DSA hasn't really done anything new, so I'm trying to be creative here. And so I thought we'd talk about the guns of the Falkland War, because it's interesting. On the table, I've got a British L1A1, I've got a British L9A1 pistol. Then I've got an Argentinian FAL and an Argentinian manufactured high power. So in 1982, Britain and Argentina were at loggerheads. I do not want to get into the politics of it, but what's really fascinating is how similar their standard issue weapons were. Let's start off with the pistols first, just because. The L9A1 was a high power. The early generations, such as this one here, were actually produced under license in Canada by John Inglis during World War II from 1944 1945 and the uh, the British military would acquire several tens of thousands they would make over 90,000 of this version here originally known as the, the number 2 Mark 1 but a, a large number would also go to Canada and elsewhere but they would have um, a, a good a good chunk 40 50,000 at the very least as these would wear out, and also as the British military would need more sidearms during the Cold War, Britain would purchase new L9A1s from FN Herstel in Belgium. In the 60s, they would buy some, and they would continue to buy them in batches through the 90s. This means you can find L9A1s of uh, several variations, including uh, you know the, this one here. Obviously, what is known as the Mark I, they had quite a few Mark IIs, and they even had a few Mark III's. Just a good, solid 9mm service gun. Well, likewise, Argentina liked the high power. They had a long-standing relationship with FN. So, in 1960, they would buy some, and then they would get into manufacturing a version of the late Mark I from FN. And then in the 70s, they would update to what we call today the 1973 pattern, or Type 73, or Model 73, which this one is, with a few changes, namely the spur hammer. This could be equivalent to, say, an early FN Mark II, or a proto Mark II. And they would manufacture both of these for military use in Argentina. So they would have the 63 or 65 pattern, I can't recall right now, and the uh, 73 pattern. They would do a later one, the, the 90, but this was mostly for commercial, if not always for commercial. Like I said, this is a late production 73 pattern. So it doesn't have the lanyard ring because it was imported into the U.S. in the late 80s, early 90s by... Pedro Belli, but um, it is an Argentine gun made by FMAP, and this would be the standard issue sidearm in Argentina during the Falklands War. So their handguns were identical, uh, maybe made in a few different places, although of course early Argentinian high powers would be Belgian as well. So it's very possible they both could have had the exact same Belgian made high power from the 60s. <laughs> as to their rifles, Again, we're very similar. Here, we have an Argentinian FAL. This was produced at the Rosario factory, FMAP, under license from FN Herstel. This is pretty much an exact copy of the standard model, often known as the 50.00, or the metric. FAL. This fires 7.62 NATO. And we have pretty much our standard features. This one is a pre-ban made back in the 80s. 
and this is semi-auto only version the military version from Argentina and the Argentinian military would be select fire although like most FALs they are predominantly used as self-loading semi-automatic rifles Britain comparatively had the L1A1 this was another variation manufactured in England under license it is a so-called inch pattern that has several updates that are just one degree or another common to the Commonwealth Australia and Canada and we have another video looking more at this I'm not gonna really repeat myself right this minute these would be produced at a few arsenals in Britain we have the Royal Small Arms Factory at Enfield we had Birmingham BSA which this one is here and Fezakerly would also do some work with these and Parker Hale would make some small parts so Argentina only had one factory whereas the UK had uh, had three main factories and a couple of subsidiaries doing uh, things now what's interesting this was always a semi-automatic rifle hence why it was also known as the SLR as a rule these were all semi-auto at least that's what the selector and the, the fire control they had in them even though they were based on the select fire FAL the British military always planned to use them as semi-auto which will come into play in the Falklands so the FALs were even adopted at a very similar time Britain would try out the so-called inch pattern and select it for further development in 1954 they would get ready and in 1957 they would officially adopt it and they would enter it into full production a couple of years later likewise Argentina would first get interested and officially select the FAL in 1955 purchasing some from Belgium and they would take a little time to gear up and get going and start mass producing them at the FMAP Rosario factory beginning in 1960 quite interesting so very similar time frames there and they would even both kind of keep them in production about the same time main production for both ran through the 60s and 70s now Britain would seem to stop making brand new FA excuse me L1A ones into the 70s they, they would stop early 70s it seems like most receivers are, are dated before then however they would keep making small parts and they would keep refurbishing for example adding this marineal furniture replacing the old wood and of course remember they had three factories to make these so it's not surprising they were able to turn out enough in a shorter time whereas in Argentina they would keep manufacturing the FAL well into the 80s and really getting into the early 90s perhaps using up leftover parts even to this day the Argentinian military uses the FAL although they've been trying to modernize them or replace them with 223's the money just hasn't been there so it hasn't happened in Britain the L1A1 was officially replaced by the famous SA80 adopted as the L85 bullpup in 1985 but it really wasn't until the late 80s 88 89 that a lot of L1A ones were starting to be pulled out of service and replaced and really it was wasn't until after the first Gulf War 91 that pretty much all the L1A ones were out and um, replaced by the L85 much to Minnie's uh, chagrin in, uh, in Britain that's a story for another day but we see we have two extremely similar guns both are firing 7.62 NATO both have 21 inch barrels both feed from detachable 20 round box magazines we just have a few differences the British gun is a little bit longer thanks to the flash hider it also takes a different pattern of bayonet that attaches with a more conventional lug it can launch rifle grenades but it is a little convoluted the Argentinian version here takes this typical FN tube bayonet sticky cosmoline and it uses this a little bit shorter but also a little heavier 
combination. Now, since this is a semi-auto, it does have the bayonet notch, but it doesn't have the grenade ring, and it doesn't have the, the internal threading for the blank fire device. But originally, it could serve multiple purposes, muzzle brake, flash hider, grenade launcher. So, kind of neat device. Both use essentially the same adjustable gas system. Now, some of the Argentinian guns have bipods, as you should see here. So we can get it out without doing it. Most had the bipod cut on the barrel, but not all were issued with bipods. But we do have a bipod, pretty light bipod. This is the QD style. There's also a fixed style, but since this is a pre-ban, I didn't want to always have the bipod on it, so I went to it for the one of the QD. Which is good, that good that complements well the select fire nature, making this effectively a small little light machine gun. Although it would overheat quite quickly and these have a lot of muzzle rise. Although with the bipod and the pistol grip, you could keep it reasonably on target, at least to, as a suppressive fire gun. Interestingly, whereas a lot of the metric FALs would go to the so-called short sights, which were three millimeters shorter, the Argentinian guns would stay with the tall sights, so almost identical to the British L1A1 sights, up until the very end of production. Finally, with the so-called Type 4 series, they would go to short sights, but most guns would have the tall. The only real difference, the front sights are almost identical. The rear sight on the Argentinian does not fold, and it has the more adjustable, uh, traditional adjustable with the push button, whereas the British, it has the folding rear sight we're familiar with. As you see, both have polymer furniture, and both would have originally had wood. So yeah, very similar guns that they went to war with. You would not really see many Argentinians picking up L1A ones to use, at least not unless they just needed a gun. But you would see some British picking up Argentinian FALs to use their full auto feature, because I guess sometimes they felt it was a good thing. So you will see some that were uh, sequestered in the field by the British and used. And many were taken back to the UK for training devices. What they would do, they would weld them up and use them to basically simulate weight and size for recruits, you know, doing a hike across the countryside. So some uh, of the Argentinian FALs would, uh, would go back home with Britain. I'm sure some L1A ones were left in Argentina as well, but you don't hear much about those. Well, that's really it. I just kind of wanted to share uh, what I thought was funny, that they both use um, essentially the same standard issue rifle and sidearm in the war. Their light machine guns were a bit different. The British used the L4A1, which was an updated Bren firing 7.62 tornado, whereas the Argentinians would use the FAP which was a heavy barrel version of the FAL. And their submachine guns would be a little different. The British would use the Sterling, a 9mm, and the Argentinians would use the FMK-3, also a 9mm. Uh, similar guns in a lot of ways, but based on uh, different things. The Sterling based on the Sten, and the FMK-3 kind of based on the Uzi a little bit. We do have videos on those as well, though. So. Anyway, just a, kind of an excuse to play with FALs. Feel free to share your own stories, and if you like the video, please click. And if you'd like to help support us, please check out the link to our Patreon page. This is Misha, and we'll catch you next time.